Red clover is an herb that if you grow it in your backyard, you'll have to replant it or reseed it every three or four years. It's not like alfalfa. It won't last for years and years and years and keep coming up. After three or four years, red clover fades out and we have to replant. But here is a blood purifier that is one of the greatest. In our red clover combination tea, red clover is our basis, but we have eight or ten other herbs mixed in with it because in cleaning the bloodstream, we have specific herbs that go into the liver to clean it, into the spleen, into the pituitary, the pineal. But the red clover is the overall blood purification uh, herb. And it is absolutely great. It's, it's high in many of our minerals. The red clover combination tea is the one that we have used for nearly 40 years now, the combination of this for cleaning up bloodstream in poisonous conditions in people who have all types of blood diseases. And it has done nothing but success. And 35, 40 years ago, we had a good name from our red clover combination from cancer patients. And they were sold on this because they had got such tremendous results. I was very pleased because they got the results and let it go at that. And the person would say, how's my cancer coming? Well, I say, as long as you're following our program, it's coming along good. I let it drop at that. But one patient wanted to find out for sure just how good that cancer was healing. And went down to Hoxie's, and of course Hoxie took a sample and, and uh, went through the full routine. And he said, well, your cancer is gone. What have you been using? Well, Dr. Chris's red clover combination tea. Let me see the formula of that. And he looked at the formula. Now, I knew that I was the only one that had red clover combination. That was it. Hoxie checked it with their formula, and it was identical. <laughs> herb by herb, right down the line. And the only change was that Hoxie had been using an inorganic iodide that uh, was toxic. And that's why the FDA called him on the carpet and pulled his off the market. Well, they couldn't call ours on because we recommended that all of our patients use ample kelp or dulse which gave them the organic iodine. Chief Sundance, Idaho Falls. I sat cross-legged when I could sit cross-legged with him in front of his teepee and, or in his teepee in, in front of his fire. And uh, we were swapping herbal remedies back and forth. And it was a very enjoyable time. Dr. Sundance, he was one of the greats of all times. Uh, if you'd ever see his scrapbook, uh, he traveled with Bill Cody, but he, he was considered not only a medicine man, but he was an Indian chief. Doc, he said, what, did you, what do you do for blood poisoning? What do you do for, for uh, cleaning up a bloodstream? Well, I said, we have our red clover combination tea, and I told him what it was. He said, that's odd. Why is it odd? Can you smell something in that kettle over the fire? And I said, yeah, yeah, it, it smells kind of herby-like. <laughs> he said, well, that's just what it is. It happens to be the same formula you just told me. The good Lord gave it to me a few years back. All right, he gave it to three of us, to Chief Sundance, to Hoxie, and to myself, because we each have different people that we work with. And it's precious. That is, that is now being, well, it's going worldwide. In fact, this red clover combination tea, um, the very people that, that um, we've been working with, Health Your Newsletter, have let people know in their bulletins 
how great the red clover combination tea is. And according to my office, we're running anywhere now from 100 to 125 pound packages a day. A red clover combination tea being shipped out month in and month out. Is, is the uh, one that Jason Winters put out there now, he never put all the prescription <coughs> Are they similar to what you have? He has the red clover and the uh, chaparral. And then he says, a mystery, a mystery herb. Herbaline. Well, that's the that's the mystery part because nobody knows what herbaline is. But his is different from his in that he has three herbals in his. We have what is it? Ten or twelve? How many? Um, I just want to make a comment, Richard. Didn't Dr. Chen talk about that third ingredient from Dr. Yeah, Dr. Chen. Didn't really have anything to do with Dr. Chen and I had a, you know, confidential conversation over Jason Winter's tea because I was interested in what the ingredient was and he had determined what it was. He told me what it was and I didn't write it down. <laughs> the next day I asked him again and he couldn't tell me because somebody had found out we had had our conversation. But we went through another uh, publication that I have on Chinese medicinal herbs, and he pointed to a different one. And he said, this one has a lot higher potency than the one Jason Winters uses, and it's a lot easier to get a hold of. But he said there's no sense in using that red clover with the uh, kelp combination. It just look good. All right, here, here is your deal. This has been advertised internationally now, and it is going all over the world. But the... 10 or 12 herbs that we have in ours includes what Jason Winter has, plus many others, but we name every one of them in it because we're proud that they're in there and there's no mystery at all. The thing is that it cleans up the bloodstream. That's what we're interested in. We change that bloodstream from bad to good and makes it an excellent alternative. Our next herb that is good for the bloodstream is burdock, burdock root. Now, the burdock root is a specific for arthritis. It's a specific for furunculosis, which is boils. It's a specific for acne. It is great. But when we gather our roots from burdock, Always get your first year's growth. Mm -hmm. Your second, third, and fourth year doesn't have the power in the root that the first year's growth does, but also it's pethy. How you tell the first year's growth from the second year when you go out at time when they should be in bloom, have uh, the flower and, and forming the, the burr on it, it doesn't have any. There is no, um, no burr or flower on the first year. So that is your first year growth. Now you have to be very, very careful what parts of the burdock you use. Very careful. You see, in the flower and the burr, we have one of the greatest teas that's ever been made for the diuretic system to clean up the plumbing system of the human body and it cannot be excelled. All right, so we know we can use the burrs and the, and the flowers. The leaves, we uh, use those in poultices when there is bursitis or painful conditions. But we never use the leaves in tea because it's bitter. Uh, it's it's not, not good to use. The stems, in the spring, we peel those stems and cut the stem up like a vegetable and low heat it and it is a delicious vegetable and the starch in it can be used by diabetics with no harm to them. We use the root for making herbal teas. The Chinese use it in so many ways in making uh, foods, in the Chinese foods. So now, only use 
the burrs, the flowers, the leaves, the stems, and the roots. <laughs> you discard the rest. But every bit of these are excellent. Every, every bit. I remember in Fort Lewis, Washington, I'd, I'd finished there and, and, uh, and so I'd got a job to keep going as a, an accountant for the state of Washington where I would uh, work from five in the morning until one at uh, about noontime and then I would go over and I would open up practice as an herbal doctor. Uh, the first couple of hours I would uh, precede my practice with digging up their gardens. I would uh, weed their gardens for a price on the guarantee that they would let me keep the weeds. <laughs> and I had salvaged my my burdock roots and my burdocks and my uh, chickweed and uh, on and on. I, I had my own supply because during the war years we couldn't get supplies from our wholesaler. And so I was getting my own herbs. But I took burdock root and I had plenty of it in that area. And I made up teas. Generally, we let the roots set for three or four months or dry them to get them out of their acid state because they are quite acid when they're green. But here, with the, with the uh, burdock root, I used it and made the tea up directly. And I would make up, so my patient who had been in a wheelchair for years with arthritis, very crippled, would have gallons of tea to drink. Every day he would drink it in copious amounts. And uh, he had been in a wheelchair for years. In six months' time, he was now working as a guard, walking his rounds out, out of the wheelchair, healed. But it was without, with the burdock and giving it to him in large amounts. Of course, we cleaned the bowel, we cleaned the bloodstream, and this is one of the processes of cleaning the bloodstream. Burdock, this is one of the most perfect herbs we have for cleaning up the bloodstream for boils and acne. Chaparral. Now, anything that tastes that nasty has to be good for something. It's awful. <laughs> it is called many, many names. It's called greasewood. It's called many things, but until you've had experience using some chaparral, don't ridicule it. We have been teaching the use of chaparral for years, and our students and our patients were very pleased with the results they were getting. But we could not do it publicly. It had to be under the counter. In other words, it would have to be in the classroom or to the patient direct because we would have been jumped on like a crow on a June bug. Well, here, one day, an article came out in uh, the local newspaper that Dr. Hogel and Dr. Smart had discovered that an Indian had been cured of, of cancer on his face by using chaparral. And my students and my patients flocked in and said, boy, you can sure talk about it now. You won't have to be so quiet about it because here we got approval by the doctors. And that same old feeling came to me and I said, now nah, take it easy. Within six weeks time, there'll be notices out in the paper warning people that chaparral is dangerous. Don't use it under any condition and it'll gradually work into a point where people won't dare use it unless going to a doctor first. And people laughed at me. But in two weeks' time, it was told that the two doctors that had made this announcement had done it without uh, advise, being advised by the AMA. And we found out that they were both <clears throat> not only belittled, but had been stepped down from their positions at the University of Utah Hospital. 
And by six weeks' time, warnings came out in the paper. Do not use chaparral. It makes cancer worse. <laughs> well, what is it doing? It's bringing it to a surface. Of course it's making it worse than it looked before. It's bringing it to a head and getting rid of it. But they didn't tell that part. And finally, because they saw people continue to use it, they warned people not to use it now because it had poisonous sprays on it. And, and to keep people from using it, the entire chaparral area that they could find was being sprayed with poisonous sprays. And this has been our battle over the years. It's asinine and it's ridiculous. It's stupid. Chaparral could do nothing but good for you, as nasty as it is. <laughs> Oregon grape, also called mountain grape. This is a kissing cousin to our barberry, which is the Berberis vulgaris group. And these all have high berberins in them, which constitute a, an ability to make the bile flow better from the liver area and the gallbladder area. If we go back again to this liver, being the large organ that it is, and having the power of magnetism that it draws from the pituitary, the pineal, the thyroid, and all other glands in the body, and neutralizes the poisons that these organs have accumulated, neutralizes them so that they can be transferred into bile, and then put out into the bowel and discarded as a laxative. Well, fine. But that's where the berberin in your organ grape, your Rocky Mountain grape, and your barberry proper comes into play. The bourbon cleans it out and gets that bile flowing. Remember once again, wherever there is a cancer patient, there is a liver patient. There is never a cancer patient unless they have liver problems. And so when I say whenever you have a liver patient, Beware. <laughs> it's just that simple. Beware. Because it goes from mild, moderate, to severe. And the answer is there. We've talked on sassafras. We know that the saffron in sassafras is one of our amazing trace minerals and very beneficial for the heart and its system. But it must not be used alone. It has to be used with the rest of the minerals that's in the sassafras bark itself. This acts as a catalyst and causes it to work so much better. Yellow dock. Yellow dock is the world's highest known herb in producing iron, organic iron. In the minerals that are connect, co collected by osmosis into the yellow dock plant, over 40% of all those minerals is iron. This is a powerhouse when it's used properly. People who have lost their vitamin B, people who need plenty of of aid from yellow dock to get no new iron in their system, if they'll start using yellow dock, they have got a powerful aid. The young lady that, that came to me in one of our conventions not too long ago, I believe it was up in Oregon someplace, <coughs> she thanked me profusely. I asked her for what? I'm a little nosy. And she said, I had lost all of my power of animation. I had no desire to even get out of bed. I, I had to force myself with every move that I made. I had gone to the pharmacies and used every type of iron that they knew of, including Geritol. Uh, I had gone to the, excuse me, but uh, I had gone to the health stores and they gave me everything they could figure out. 
And then she said, I was despondent, and I didn't know where to turn. And I happened to pick up a monthly periodical that you'd written an article in on Yellow Dock. And she said, it said that Yellow Dock was the most powerful herbal aid that we had, and to use it. So she said, I started using two or three capsules three times a day. And she said, boy, I got pep and energy now. She says, it's just changed my whole life. She says, it has done miracles for me. And she said, one simple article. I think the Lord had you write that article. <laughs> she said, I don't know whether anybody else got to get out of it, but I surely did. All right. As the yellow dock draws from the dust of the earth, the minerals in, it gathers plenty of iron. And by osmosis, it changes from dead inorganic iron that can only be accepted into the body to live organic iron that can be assimilated. I'm going to keep repeating this until you get sick of hearing me say it. But when you get sick of it, maybe you'll remember it. I have to be told things so many times, it's sad. And so I know repetition counts. Yes. 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 Uh, oft times, oft times our bee is eaten out by using the wrong type of herbs. If we use too much golden seal, now golden seal is great, now don't take me wrong. The golden seal is like that which could heat this house or burn it down. It's got to be kept under control. And too much golden seal will eat the vitamin B out of your body and you'll lose animation if you use too much of it. Now there's the key. But uh, let's renew it. Let's put more good bloodstream back in the body. Mm -hmm. um, I made a, a tincture using Oregon grape root, bardock root, and yellow dog root. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with an herbologist about it, and he said, well, if you use a tincture, it will just drain your liver, and um, it's unbalanced, and it really is not good. I was, I was thinking, well, it's really good because it's really good anemia or with arthritis and liver condition, it would be a fantastic um, uh, spring tonic. Seems to me it would be a spring tonic, but it is imbalanced, or could it be used like that? I think there was a little professional jealousy there. I, I wouldn't mind having some of it myself if you want to bring it around. <laughs> no, it has nothing toxic in it, it has nothing poisonous in it, and it has nothing habit forming in it. And it should be very, very beneficial. Sarsaparilla. Now, that's the correct pronunciation. Down in the south, they call it sarsaparilla because it's too hard to get all those letters in. But this is high in hormone and estrogen. It's got a number of things in it, but it is a blood purifier, as these others are all blood purifiers. I had mentioned the saffron and sassafras. You can take um, you can take your sassafras and see miracles with it, and I have. I have had a patient who had edema, cardiac dropsy, and uh, nothing seemed to help that individual at all. I gave them sassafras tea. Ridiculous. Simple. But the edema left. And the circulation stepped up. And the heart became more firm and sound. But your sassafras is wonderful. Don't worry about the saffron. Just use the rest of the bark. Yes. Sassafras. sassafras. I, I switched back to sassafras again. We don't recommend using it over six weeks at a time because it thins the bloodstream. Yes, it thins the bloodstream. He was a smart man. Yeah, if, if you will use your sassafras bark for six weeks and then change to another one. Another wonderful one would be Brigham. 
Now, your, your Brigham tea, uh, it's called Mormon tea, it's called desert tea, but it's a Federa, which, which really gives it its classification of 5,000 years old in the Chinese routine. A Federa has been used that long. Uh, all right, so for six weeks, then we'll use a Federa. And then go back to the sassafras if you wish, or switch to something else. But your ephedra, which we don't have here in the altar it is, but which is one of the greats of all times. If you ever see one of the trees, have an old trunk, great big old trunk that looks like it's hundreds of years old. And out of that trunk comes the little limbs. And the limbs have no leaves on them. That's the most stupid thing you ever saw. And uh, these limbs are your federal limbs, but there's an old, old adage, and follow it, please. When you take one of these limbs and break it, if it's yellow on the inside, don't use it. If it's dark on the inside, use it. If, in other words, if it's yellow, it's acid. Go back every six weeks. Every six weeks, you can alternate. Mm -hmm. Oh, surely. Yes, you can alternate them this way and drink them along. Sassafras, I'm speaking of. Sarsaparilla, it, it is uh, one of the combinations that we use in our uh, homonestrogen and so forth. It, it's excellent. Yeah, but we're talking about the sassafras right now. Now, the Brigham tea. Uh, maybe I'm getting you all mixed up. You've got to keep right with me. <laughs> Your Brigham tea, which is, is a Federa, is the one that I say has the little limbs that come up that when you gather them, break them. If they are yellow, they're too acid to use, the middle of them. If they are dark, they're, they're more closer to the alkaline status. This is one of the finest blood purifiers. And I'll tell you why it's a good blood purifier. It runs 10% copper, organic copper. And this 10% organic copper causes a solution to be made up in the bloodstream that leaches out in organic calcium. And that's why it's so good for an arthritic condition. What is your uh, what is your concoction here? Uh, how much do you use of what here with the sassafras for the for a cardiac and dropsy and? Uh, oh, you use it straight. Just straight. Just straight. And what? I mean, what proportion? A cup three times a day. Thank you. More or less is needed, of course. Uh, uh, Ephedra. Brigham tea. Brigham tea. Mormon tea. You don't have to be baptized to use it. It's all right. 10% uh, is what the national average is. But it is one that is accredited to the Chinese as being one of their greatest herbs, one of their finest. The last article I'm going to talk on, the last subject today on this particular a series of herbs, which is the alternative herb, is garlic. Garlic. I give you a guarantee right now that if you'll use lots and lots of garlic, chew it and, and have it with you all the time and always use a lot of garlic, that you will never get flu or colds or pneumonia. Nobody will get close enough to you to give it to them. <laughs> But, but really, it does purify the bloodstream. Garlic, yes. I want to ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they're putting out this colic, you know, they, they're over in Hawaii right now, and they claim that this is much better for you. I disagree because I told them, I said that I thought that the, the straight garlic was a lot better in all forms because of the sulfur and so forth, right? That's my belief. Uh, your tasteless garlic, they have... Circumstantial evidence exhibit A, B, C, and D <laughs> that proves that it does thus, thus, and thus. 
but it doesn't do that stuff that does to me. I, I, I buy quart bottles of it. And, and it doesn't do the work that the raw garlic will do for me. It takes one pound of garlic bulbs to make up eight ounces of garlic juice. <coughs> and that eight ounces is potent. I'd advise you to cut it. <laughs> Speaking of cutting, I remember we had a health store on 3rd South in Salt Lake. We'd, we'd got it from Dr. Loretta, um, Dr. Loretta Foot, and uh, uh, it, it was in a community market building, and we were way at the back. And one day, a 